Robin Kira, a digital transformation expert and insure tech influencer, who is a recovering Allianz sales agent that built top grossing apps in gaming and fintech, is now a rebel in the industry. My first question to you guys is, who of you has ever heard the sentence, insurance products are not sold like cars and cell phones, but they need to be sold by agents? Who has saw, heard the sentence? All right. I believe that the sentence, insurance products are not bought, but sold, is complete bullshit. And I will tell you why. I strongly believe we as an industry just do not a very good job in two things, communicating with our customers and providing products, digital products and services that excite them. Maybe a few exceptions we already saw here today on stage. And I will share like five things one might do. But why actually should you listen? Why should you actually listen to me? Um, who am I and why should you care? As I mentioned, I've been a sales agent selling insurance products on the street of Hamburg with like a 27 kilo heavy IBM laptop and a lot of forms and things to fill out. Um, but I also did large scale transformation projects for Allianz Germany in the headquarters. Then I quit and I went to an online gaming company and there we produced apps and I was also partly responsible for the product portfolio management, single apps that made over a billion in sales. But, and the company was sold for 270 million, I had no equity so I still need to work. Then I went to a private bank and uh, we built a um, digital product and wealth app that amassed over 1.4 billion assets under information. Again, no equity, and you, you see where the story is going. So, uh, parallelly, my blog, Digital Scouting, I found it as a, as a hobby, but it just exploded um, over the times, so also inspired by people like uh, Matteo, of course, um, and it exploded to a community of 10,000 of innovators in the insurance and finance industry. And um, out of this, actually, a small consulting company arose. We are 20 people, we do four things. We speak, as, as here right now. We build, especially we help us building digital products and services. We do also market entry, especially in the German-speaking country, because we know a lot of people. And last but not least, we do attention hacking. And what that is, we'll share later. But why is attention so important? I strongly believe Attention is so important because without the attention, you, have to have, you can have the best amp, the best insurance product on the world, you're not going to sell it. So attention is key to sales. And, um, but we have a, there's a situation, attention is changing, is shifting. Back in the good old days, you had the customer here, you had the, um, some corporates here, in the, middle, in the middle there were media, there were newspaper, magazines, TV, and you needed to pay a lot of money in order to get in front of the customer to these gatekeepers. But now we have new channels and new media, new formats, and um, why is this happening? Because the internet is expanding even more into our daily lives. And um, just to give you a number, on this planet, we have 10 billion mobile devices. This is more, we have more mobile devices on this planet than people walking the earth. And this is one of the reasons why we have this change in the attention. Over 3.2 billion people are using social media daily. This is 42% of the worldwide population. So things changed um, dramatically. But how is the industry reacting to that? I believe large parts of the industry behave when it comes to uh, products and uh, communication as if we would be still 1986. Um, we are still running TV ads, even though most people have their cell phone in their hand when there's halftime at sports events. We're still buying ads in printed newspapers, printed magazines, and um, we still send a once a year paper letters to our customers or do cold calling because the name of a customer appears on a list for May to be called. Um, and I think this um, shows that um, the reaction in large parts 
how it looks like. Of course, we do experiment with these things. We have our social media outlets, but um, there are rare examples of where we really put it into the center of our communication. How could you, how could we actually take advantage of this? And by the way, I'm not in the bad news business. Yeah, actually, this is a great opportunity that there are a lot of people not doing all of this because this means for those who do a big, big uh, um, opportunity. I think we can, there are three layers of the internet and we need to address them. The first is infrastructure, servers, cable in the Atlantic. These are all topics um, I think even as insurer, maybe as reinsurer, um, cannot you know, invest in there and I think we should not do it. But on top of this inter infrastructure, we can build applications. And even if you're an agent or a broker um, and you cannot build applications because you don't have the resources, you can produce content and use the applications of others and get in order to get in front of your customers and as a um, company itself. But what I want to say about the applications, last year, 194 billion apps were downloaded. So the days in which you could just produce an app on the side and it was very successful are over. You need to produce a killer app in order to have a chance to come and to get part of the home screen of the cell phone of your customer. And I believe that a lot of insurance applications are, have a certain issue. Most replace a painful and boring process with a painful and boring process in digital but do not deliver value um, to the customer and to have a chance to get on the home screen. Um, don't get me wrong, I know it's terribly, terribly technical hard to get you know, all the legacy systems giving an overview about the contracts a certain customer has or a family. I know this is techni very, technically very hard and I know it's politically very hard um, to do this internally um, and have these discussions. Nevertheless, I think insurance folders a digital sales process, even if it's a chatbot and everything is pink, does not cut it these days. Um, and I think we are, as an industry, we save costs, we streamline things, um, but this are nothing that the customer cares about. Um, and I think we need to deliver what the customer cares. And the same with content. Um, it needs to be nowadays, there's an explosion of content. You guys see it in your social media outlets, on your phones, you see it, it, content, ex content is exploding. And I think we need to really deliver a lot of value um, and not only just say bye, bye, bye. Um, and now let's go to the, to, the, to the five strategies. Well, how many of you ever went home after a hard day's work and said, Honey, let's have a look at our insurance folder. One, okay, you're a rock star, you're a rock star. I think this number in the general population is even a little bit lower than um, uh, probably 0.5%. And, and I think this is, this is the real, real um, uh, challenge. And, and this is the reason why I strongly believe we should produce and give applications that don't smell, taste, and feel like insurance. Um, so, and I don't like to predict. I really don't like to. I'm not Nostradamus, but I think if I look what kind of applications currently are successful in the market independently of the industry, I strongly believe an application that has the label insurance will never, ever, 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 ever be successful. Why? Because the people don't like insurance. And, um, but again, I'm not in the bad, business, bad news business. I think when we package our services we have, for example, like Generali Vitality did, um, in a certain way that it covers um, topics the customer are interested in, for example, business, finance, lifestyle, or the car example we had, or managing everyday life. These are topics you can see from the content side, but also the application side, people are really interested in, and these are the things people download. Um, but I think we need to consider two other things. In 2007, when the iPhone came out, the most successful app was an app that simulated that you could drink beer from your cell phone. You remember, everybody who laughs still remembers that one. I, I had it too. Um, but th things have changed. Again, with not 193 billion apps downloaded, you need to be really, really good um, at that. And you need to solve, um, you need to solve a pain point, a true problem of your customer for free. 
Um, what does it, what do the others do? We have WhatsApp. That's free real-time communication around the world. If you would have told me this 20 years ago that there's such a service for free, I would have said um, you're insane because I was paying five uh, uh, marks or, or golden uh, to, um, uh, to call home when I was in America per minute. Or what does Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok do? It's a new way of staying in touch and contact with people that are physically not there. We have a lot of to-do apps and calendar apps that are dominating home screens are exploding. These are solving true problems of the customer and not the next insurance folder. And what could one do um, is, I think, to find a demographic or a cultural group that has been underserved or to go to live events or um, certain topics. We can, I think insurance companies are experts in certain fields. We are experts in, um, in, 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 in birth of children, health, raising a child. We, should, we could uh, develop um, uh, products around school, college, marriage, or divorce, um, marrying, um, um, buying a house, building wealth, investment. And actually there's a whole movement. Um, you have the, that they say, we do um, wellness, physical wellness and financial wellness. And we as an insurance industry, due to accident insurance, liability insurance, life insurance, health insurance, we know a lot about this. Why not build products that put that in the focus and um, try to sell uh, then afterwards? And all the things I just said, all these uh, live events, they have one thing in common. They don't smell like insurance to a lot of people. One thing we need to be very clear about when we develop a digital product for a customer, a lot of um, decision makers in the insurance industry, in the rare case, they have actually a digital product that's getting traction. They're saying, Robin, when are we able to put a price tag on that? And I'm like, never. You're never. It's the same as if you would go and say, when are we going to put a price tag on a customer entering an agency? The idea is, Think about the other ones, the, the big tech giants, Google, Facebook, and co. When is Google going to uh, price us when we use Google Maps? Never. Why? Because with all the digital products and services they put in front of us, and they're really cool, um, they are getting our attention. Um, and so you have us and our attention here, you have um, the rest of the world here, and the tech giants going in the middle, establishing themselves there, and demanding, and demanding a modest fee when people want to get in contact with us, especially, for example, Google AdWords and Facebook ads. Um, and I think this is a big opportunity when we build application, really solve the problem for a customer and giving it for free, that we get their loyalty, that we get their data, we can cross and upsell, upsell not because a person is on a list, on a paper list, but really through the need of a person. Um, we can do prevention of claims um, uh, better, we, we put them and try to, we try to change his behavior. And then suddenly we will see that people are going to approach us because we are constantly in their daily life and in their daily routine and they're constantly uh, and they're approaching us when they have an insurance need. We had now two hacks for building a, pr uh, a product, no insurance and solve a problem for free. And now three hacks for delivering uh, content. Well, what, is, what do you guys think is the biggest spike in Twitter usage in general? It's during the halftime of a sports event. And what does it say? That the advertisement being run there or on TV, the people don't spend the intention anymore. But the prices have not dropped. So, and studies also show that the classical formats of advertisement don't have the effect anymore. But good, con good content, especially on mobile phones. I strongly believe the best content for people, and that's also our experience at Digital Scouting, at the platform we build up, is help people and give them information they are looking for. So instead of explaining the functionalities of a term life insurance or disability insurance for the 115th times, we could do things like 10 things a family father needs to know for the case he doesn't come home. Oh, that's like a spike in, <laughs> in the mood at the room. This is a totally different approach than trying to sell insurance products. It's like you go in a bar uh, and see an interesting uh, person and you just go there and kiss him or her. 
Uh, no, you, you need to do a little bit before and you need to help and, and be nice to her. And I think this is the same here. Another thing about quantity, I strongly believe quantity is king. And we just see in the search um, uh, algorithms that are evolving right now, only the beginning of really truly um, 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 machine learning algorithms there. You need to, my personal opinion, flood the internet. And if, if your blog or your content you're producing do it once a month or once a week, that just doesn't cut it. At Digital Scouting, we produce for our own brand every single day 20 to 80 pieces of content. And if you are annoyed because I'm squatting your LinkedIn feed in two times a day, missing out 78 other pieces of content on other channels. And if you produce only once a month or once a week, you can see what is the probability that you get in front of the people you are trying to target. Another thing, we strongly believe video is king. In 2020, which is like next year, by the way, I was really shocked when I was like thinking about how to introduce this number. When is this going to be? Oh my God, it's next year. So <laughs> it's like, I'm old. Um, so. Uh, in 2020, 79% of the traffic in, uh, internet traffic will be video traffic. So people are watching the stuff we actually produce. Um, and we see also currently an explosion on LinkedIn. Um, 18 months ago, there were rarely people um, uploading uh, videos, especially in the insurance and finance space. And now even the Allianz CEO, Oliver Bett, does a vlog style video in front of the shareholder meeting. By the way, very well done. But what are the secrets uh, um, of our videos? What we have been doing over the last year was we produced 120 videos. It's like every three days a video. And we tested it, especially for paid media. So what we have out of these 120 um, pieces of video, we have seven, seven uh, pieces of content that drive subscription. And now we are able to um, scale up um, with one subscription below one euro uh, a subscription. And I think this is a nice strategy to produce a lot and then you throw it against media and see uh, which one is going to And by the way, if I look at these seven videos, they're not my best, they're not my funniest. I don't have a clue why people are subscribing, but they do so, you know, I throw money at it. So in 2019, in this year, if you don't have a video strategy or a YouTube strategy, it's time to, uh, to, to, to get one and go massively in this direction. Just start. Um, I, I mentioned we found digital scouting. Uh, it exploded after like six months, and, and now two years later, a small company with 20 people. And what do you think? How long did it take me from my first idea of doing uh, something like digital scouting and actually producing the homepage? How much time did it take me? What do you think? One day. One day? It took me seven years. It is the biggest regret of my professional life that I was thinking for seven years, what are others going to think? What if a future boss investor uh, 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 is going to, what are my kids are going to say? It was completely stupid. And if I would have, if I think about the idea what has, would have happened over the last seven years and where would be now, uh, it, it's, it's really astonishing. So my biggest um, plea to you, or my biggest um, um, argument to you is, don't be so dumb as I have been. Yeah? Just start, do things, try things out. If it works, you're the king. If it doesn't work, it doesn't matter because the whole thing is going down anyway. So it can't go anything wrong. But what is the goal here? I strongly believe when we put digital products and services in front of our customers, an ecosystem of them that really helps them in their daily life solving true problems and we hack their attention with all sorts of tactic and tools and we put massively valuable content in front of them that really is relevant. They, we put it into forms and into channels they really, really like. Then um, we as an insurance industry, um, we I think have a golden era in front of us. Um, thank you very much. So, if you made it to here, it means you really like the video. It would mean the world to me if you could hit the subscribe button down here or sign up for a newsletter so we can give you all the hottest, newest trends we scout around the world for free even sooner.